there's a kind of paragliding that is by far and away the most dangerous, the least fulfilling, and the ugliest way to fly. This type of paragliding will make you learn slower, fly lower, make you bomb out more often, and ultimately, this type of paragliding will suck your soul out your asshole. It's got nothing to do with what kind of glider you're flying or where you're flying it. And unfortunately, I have done a ton of it. So today, I want to teach you what this kind of paragliding is, and I'm going to tell you all about it so you don't have to do it yourself. You want to know what the worst kind of paragliding is? Let's get right into it. See ya. Hey, this is Ari in the air. Welcome back to the channel. Stoked you're here today. This is my 107th episode on this channel. And if you like this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you what else I'm offering. So what is this type of paragliding that's so awful? I came up with a word for it. It's called comparagliding. Comparagliding is when you're constantly comparing yourself to other people and it will suck your soul out your asshole. <laughs> so today I want to tell you about three of the most salient things about comparagliding. Okay. And then we're going to tie it all together. Okay. So the first thing is that comparagliding makes you suck at paragliding and it stunts your learning. So paragliding depends on your ability to be present and observant and wise in the present moment. And if you're comparing yourself to other people, then you can't do that because comparison is an evaluation. Observation is pure. Can't do those two things at the same time. So if you're comparing, you're not observing, you're not present, you're not doing the thing. So you're going to project where you think you should be or where you want to be, or you're going to see other pilots and you're going to make decisions based on them instead of flying the air, flying the day, flying yourself and the glider where you are in that present moment. Okay. Paragliding is a game between the atmosphere and yourself and comparison. Comparagliding is a social game. So if you want to get good at paragliding, then you have to play the paragliding game, which is between you and the atmosphere. And if you're comparagliding, then you're playing a social game and you're not going to get good at the other thing. Okay. The next thing is that comparagliding poisons our culture. Okay. It is literally comparagliding and our desire to like compare each other and climb and dominate and, and be revered is the root of the machismo, overly competitive, show off, asshole, um, win lose, zero sum, cock measuring contest bullshit that definitely manifests in all kinds of sports, and paragliding is no exception. We have an amazing opportunity to make paragliding more meaningful, more fulfilling more inclusive, a change that allows us to have more support, deeper friendships, better mental flexibility, more emotional intelligence, and ultimately fly safer, further, learn faster, and have just way more fun. We have this opportunity to change our culture and our Addiction to comparagliding is at the root of what needs to change. That's not to say that we need to shame our desire or our innate drive to be recognized, to be differentiated, to be individuated, to be approved of by our peers, to prove to ourselves our own excellence, our own courage, our own bravery, our own mastery. Those are all beautiful things in paragliding, but we need to see it as such. And when we can see it as such, then we won't need to compare ourselves to other people. We will actually be able to be where we are okay, and go from there. 
The third thing that I want to talk about is comparagliding as it relates to safety and risk. And I already mentioned that if we are comparagliding, then we're not really present with ourselves and where we are in our learning, in our gliders. We're looking at the other guy and we're trying to make decisions based on that, which makes us way less safe as pilots. But the more important thing is that our we, we, we need to consider the risk that we're taking based on our motivation and our motivational structure here. So if you imagine for a second that you have just died paragliding, okay, which is a good thing to ruminate on, like remembering that you're in one of the world's most dangerous sports is probably a good exercise. Imagine that you've died paragliding and your epitaph will read one of two things. It will either say, Ari lays here, he died doing what he really loved, what brought him so much joy and meaning, what he did for himself and for his soul. Mm. Or, Ari, that poor guy, he could never find his own sense of self-approval, and so he was constantly mired in seeking external validation by pursuing more and more dangerous activities. He never found that external validation, and unfortunately, the pursuit of that ultimately led to his untimely death. I say airy there because literally this is something I've had to deal with. I've had my own abandonment and approval wounds in my life. And so my soul has been whispering to me for a long time that I'm afraid of dying showing off. But if I die in the pursuit of what really brings me joy and what brings me alive, then so be it. Those are two very different things. And so that's my soul saying that I don't want to die in vain. I don't want to die just seeking external validation. Dying paragliding is one thing, but dying seeking external validation is another. And the reality is that paragliding is one of the world's most dangerous sports. And it has an incredible power to transform our lives and bring us emotionally corrective experiences. But if we are merely comparagliding all the time, then we miss the benefits and we risk our lives in vain. Which reminds me of something my friend Lewis Jones, who's a prolific base jumper, he says, you know who's the best base jumper in the world? best base jumper in the world is the one who's having the most fun. And I would add to that the one that's being the most fulfilled, that's making the most meaning, that's really like coming the most alive through it. The moral of the story here is that you are already awesome and you don't have to fly. You're already holding this inherent worth of your being that you don't have to earn. And as I tell you this, I try to tell myself this. Wherever you are in your life, in your paragliding progression, it's fine. And the more you can be right there with it, the better. It'll feel better. You'll learn faster. You'll fly safer. Everyone around you will benefit from you being right where you are. And the reality is, you can't be anywhere else. That's an illusion. So approve of yourself. Forgive yourself. And commit yourself to being right where you are. I got your back in this. I'm trying to do it for myself as well. If you're interested in talking about these kinds of things, consider checking out my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash airy in the air, or send me an email, airy in the air at gmail.com. I'm offering paragliding coaching calls as well as paragliding progression plans to help you move through these kinds of different layers. And I would love to support you on this. So 
Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe. Share the videos around. We'll see you on the next episode.